finding an equation of a line. In this lesson, you will learn how to find an equation of a line given two points on the line. So what do we already know? We know that slope is rise over run. So if you have two points, here's your first point, and you want to get to the second point, you're going to look at the rise, which is the difference of the y values, how high up it's going vertically, over the run, how far horizontally is it going to go. So we can label our points with generic ordered pairs. If this one is x1, y1, and this one is x2, y2, then this point is going to be x2 because it has the new x value, it's traveled horizontally, but it hasn't gone up at all, so it's still y1. Well then, we can take what we know and say, okay, well our run is this x value minus the first x value, and that gives us the distance between the two points. Our rise is the second y value over the first y value, and that gives us, or the difference, I'm sorry, the first y value minus the second, the second y value minus the first y value, and that gives us the difference between the two, which is the distance between them. What do we already know? We know that slope is rise over run. So when we're looking at the slope, <clears throat> we need two points <coughs> on the line. We're going to look at the starting point and the ending point of this line segment. So when we're looking at the slope, we want to know the rise, which is how high up it went vertically, over the run, which is how far it went horizontally. So we can label our ordered pairs. If this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2, then this point down here is going to be x2 because it has traveled, if you take the first point, it's traveled horizontally, but it has not traveled vertically. So our run would be the difference of the two x values. So if we take x2 minus x1, we'll get a positive number. Remember that you need to have a positive distance because you cannot have a negative distance. And then we take y2 minus y1 and that gives you the distance it went vertically. So then we're just going to take those algebraic expressions and replace the rise and the run with those algebraic expressions, and that's how you find your slope. So let's apply it to this problem. Allie charges $20 to babysit for two hours and $55 to babysit for seven hours. Write an equation to represent how much Allie charges for her babysitting services. So whenever I'm writing an equation, I like to look at the graph first because it helps it to make sense to me. So first we're going to label our x and y axes, and our x is going to be the number of hours. So we have one hour, two hours, three, four, five. I'm just making each of the markings one hour. And then our y value or our y axis is going to be the amount of money, how much she charges. And I'm going to just go by um, units of 10, because if we try to do units of 1, that's going to be a lot. Oh, that's a 30. Um, there would have to be a lot of markings there, and our graph would get kind of jumbled up. So 10 is, is nice and spread out, um, because if we look at the numbers in the problem, we have a 20 and we have a 55. So we should be good using units of 10 for that one. All right, so then I'm going to graph my points. Well, it's $20 to babysit for two hours. So I go over to two hours and I go up to $20. And there's my first point. And I like to label them. That way I know what my values are. So my x, -ax, or my x value was two and my y value was 20. Then we have $55 for seven hours. So I go over to seven hours and I go up and it doesn't have to be perfect. And that is 755. That's my ordered pair. 
and then then you'll notice my line's not exactly straight. They don't have to be perfect, but you'll be able to use a ruler and that'll make it easier for you. Okay, so we want to look at the rise over the run. So if we do that, we can do our run this way and our rise this way. So this would be the ordered pair seven because we've moved horizontally, but we have not moved vertically. So seven, 20. So then for our run, we're going to look at the difference between the X's seven minus two. So seven minus two gives us five. And then over here, we're going to take 55 minus 20, which is 35. So our rise is 35 and our run is five. So our slope is 35 over five, which is seven. So now we need to set up an equation. Now we could use slope intercept form, which most of you should be familiar with, but in order to use that, we need a Y intercept and we don't have one. If we extend the line, we might be able to figure it out, but instead we're going to use something called point slope. And that's what you use, what you can use when you're given a point on the line and the slope. Well, we were given two points, but we found the slope using those two points. So now we have, we can choose either one of these points and we have the slope. And that point slope form is y minus one of the y values, so I'll just say y1, equals the slope times x minus one of the x values. And whichever y value I picked, I have to pick the x value that's from that ordered pair. So I'm going to plug in my first ordered pair. So I have a 20 for my y value. My slope is 7. And then we have x minus 2. And then it's just a matter of simplifying the equation. So we leave the y minus 20 the way it is, and then we have 7x minus 14. Keep in mind that's a 2, not a 1. All right, so we're going to add the 20 over, and we get 7x plus 6. So our equation is y equals 7x plus 6. So now we can figure out how much Allie is going to charge for any number of hours. Again, you didn't have to use point slope. You could have found the y-intercept and then used slope-intercept form. For many of these problems, there are several ways to do them. As long as you use a correct method, it should be fine. So now it's your turn to try one on your own. Find the equation of the line that passes through the points 4, negative 5, and 1, negative 4. This is just like the last problem where you have two points. Remember, we were given two points. You find the slope, and then you can either use the slope-intercept form or the point-slope sl form of the line. So go ahead and try this in your notes and we'll discuss it when we get back to class.